Here. Today we're going to talk about people. You know, I don't mean talk about them like gossip, but how people impact us in our lives. Um, unless we live on an island, we're around people, right? And none of us are what you would say on our own. There are people around us in our midst and um, people can bring us great joy. They can also bring pain and sadness. People can bring hurt, but they can also be a good thing in our lives. So we're just gonna tear this apart a little bit, unpack it today and talk about people. But first I wanna share this. This past week, as I was getting ready to walk out the door to come to the office, I noticed on my phone that I had missed a call from Dusty. I guess I had been in the other part of the house because he had dialed just minutes before. So <clears throat> when I got in my car and started driving, I, I called him. I have Bluetooth, so there was, I, I drive by the rules. And um, anyway, I dialed him. He didn't pick up. No biggie. Well, like immediately after, um, my car tells me he just sent a text message. And I think, eh, when I get to the office, I'll read it. And so then, like literally 20 seconds later, my phone rings and it's dust. And he goes, Mom? And I said, yes. He goes, have you read my text message yet? I said, no, son, I, I'm driving. And he said, oh, thank goodness. Thank goodness. I go, why? What are, is something wrong? Why are you? He said, I, I just would rather tell you in person. So I, I'm thinking one of the grandkids fell. I don't know. What, what are you about to tell me? And he says, um, I was busy making a delivery for one of our businesses. And um, so I was texting you, give me a sec. But my phone auto corrected and sent you a text that says, give me sex. <laughs> and he said, that went to my mother. Unbelievable. And so I want, he said, I wanted to make sure I explained to you that I, I'm not weird or anything, Mom. I'm good. I'm good. <laughs> People can bring joy. They can make us laugh. I mean, that made me laugh. It was a belly laugh this week with Dusty. Have you ever gone out to eat um, or maybe to a, a do you remember what a show is like, you know? <laughs> like years ago, we used to be able to go to movies. Um, have you ever gone out with um, people to eat or to a show, and there's it's two or three couples and then you alone? If, anybody ever done that besides me? Well, it feels awkward, doesn't it? I know I've learned these last 13 years, if I go out with several couples, when we get to the table, I wait to take a seat now to make sure all the couples get to sit with each other, and then I take a chair. Um, you, you realize that it's different, and it can feel really awkward. Or how about this? Has someone in your life, maybe your parents, maybe a boss, maybe a teacher, maybe a spouse, has someone in your life ever made you feel insignificant or less than or worthless or not important? I mean, how do we handle people that bring that sort of rejection into our lives? How do we handle that hurt and pain? Have you ever wondered what to do with the fear of people, like wanting to build up a wall so you won't get hurt again? Jeremiah, a prophet in the Old Testament, he was called by God. And um, when he was called, he protested. He told God, I, I, I'm too young and I don't speak good. I don't think I should do this. 
And God, as always, had an answer for him. Jeremiah 1.8, do not be afraid of their faces, for I am with you to deliver you, says the Lord. That verse, Jeremiah 1.8, was my David's go-to verse. Every Sunday, he stood on this verse, don't be afraid of their faces. And sometimes on Sundays after church, he'd say, man, it was a rough crowd today. They didn't laugh at one joke. They looked bored. Five people fell asleep. And he said, but I'm clinging to that verse. Don't look at their faces. Just get up and do what God told you to do. See, fear of people can be detrimental. It can hurt a marriage. It can hurt a friendship. And if relationships with people spark anxiety or fear in your heart, there's good news today because Jesus wants us free from the fear of people. There's no re rejection in Jesus, only acceptance. There's no condemnation in him, only forgiveness and mercy. One day, he taught a lesson to the people as was his custom. He taught a lot of lessons about things around them as they walked along the highways and byways of Israel. But this particular day, he taught a lesson on sparrows. And he was wanting to show his people the great value he puts on one individual life. In Matthew 10, it says, are, Jesus speaking, are not two sparrows sold for a copper coin, which would be similar to our penny? Are not two sparrows sold for a copper coin? The same story is in Luke 12, 6. Are not five sparrows sold for two copper coins? And not one of them is forgotten before God. Now, if you tear apart this story from the research I did, this is what I discovered. In his day, they had a marketplace, of course, in each of the cities, and the vendors would come and set up small booths. And one of the things they would sell, some vendors, is sparrows on a stick, roasted sparrows. And before you get all grossed out, I discovered in my research that right now, if, if you could, we're barred basically as Americans from flying anywhere right now out of the country. But if you could fly to, to Japan, there's a city in Japan, they have vendors in their marketplace and they sell roasted sparrows uh, as a delicacy. You can buy them on, roasted on the stick. So from the two passages recorded for us in Luke and Matthew, we see that two sparrows roasted on a stick were sold for one copper coin. But some places you could get five sparrows for two copper coins. Kind of like, have you ever heard of a baker's dozen? Where if you buy, a, I know all about this, you buy a dozen donuts you get an extra one. Have you ever heard of that? I think Panera does that with um, uh, bagels, or they used to. Um, well, anyway, the vendor would throw in a fifth sparrow for free. Now, by the time you're in third grade math, you know if you get two for one coin and you get four for two coins, that means the fifth sparrow was worthless. The vendor just threw it in for good measure. In other words, it was the odd bird out. Probably all of us at times have faced the fear of being the odd bird out, of standing alone without the approval of others. We maybe have felt we're not as special or valuable as other people. Do you remember the story of King David when he was a shepherd boy? He was treated like a fifth sparrow. Samuel the prophet comes to David's house, tells Jesse the father, gather the family, I wanna see all the sons. One of them's gonna be anointed king of Israel. 
And the father gathers seven sons and left David out in the fields tending the sheep. Samuel goes by each son, and I'm sure he was thinking, oh, this will be the one, he's strapping big, or this will be the one, he seems really intelligent, or this will be the one, he seems like he's a really kind man. But as he went to each of the seven sons, God kept saying no. And finally, Samuel turns to dad and says, do you have any more sons? Because these seven are not it. And the dad is like, well, I got this kid out taking care of the sheep. First Samuel 16, 7, the Lord said to Samuel as he was going through the seven rejected sons, do not look at his appearance or physical stature because I have refused him. The Lord does not see as man sees. Man looks at the outward appearance, but the Lord looks at the heart. And so when Samuel asked Jesse about another son, David, the one that apparently had no value to his father, he was brought in and anointed king. In my opinion, I don't have a, a scripture on this right now, but I think God often passes over the hot shots and picks from the back of the line. I think God loves to choose people that others have passed over, rejected, or put down. Maybe you've heard people say about you, ah, oh, you're never going to amount to anything. I know David, my David had a teacher tell him that in high school. But the neat thing about God is he chooses us anyway because we can amount to something. He looks at our hearts and he says, I can use him. I can use her. So don't let anyone ever tell you you're just a fifth sparrow. Jesus told us not one sparrow falls to the ground without him noticing. Luke 12, 7, the very hairs of your head are all numbered, or the ones you used to have, right? They're all numbered. Do not, it was supposed to be a joke. Do not fear, therefore, you are of more value than many sparrows. God knows us so well, he even knows the number of hairs on our heads. We don't have to fear. We're safe in God's love. So when life tries to tell you you're a nobody headed nowhere, just remember this. Jesus says, no, you're not. When life says you're less than, God says you matter. He sees great value in each of us. The Bible in several places tells us to observe the fowl or the birds of the air. We can learn valuable lessons from birds. Sparrows were considered like, because they're so small, I suppose, common, insignificant, unimportant. Notice God didn't tell us to notice the strutting peacock. In fact, we need to be careful if we're strutting around in pride, because God is not happy if we start getting into pride. And the, have you ever watched a peacock strut? They look good and they know they do. You can't ever forget, I can't ever forget where we came from. We need to remember our life before Jesus. We got to stay humble and be grateful for what he's already done because God values our humility and he loathes pride. First Peter 5, humble yourselves under the mighty hand of God that he may exalt you. He does the exalting, not us. We are of more value than the little sparrow. We are created in his image, and he wants us with him forever. And he's aware. He's fully aware when we fall to the ground. We're valuable to God, and he is aware of every step of our journey. He knows what makes us feel worthless, and he understands if we feel alone. Psalm 102, verses 6 and 7. I'm like a pelican of the wilderness. I'm like an owl in the desert. 
I lie awake and I am like a sparrow alone on the housetop. This psalmist that penned those words, he apparently was feeling alone, the odd bird out. Why was the sparrow alone? Well, the psalmist doesn't tell us. Was his nest or home torn apart? Maybe he lost his family in a storm. Maybe he lost his mate. All we know is the sparrow was alone and lonely. Even Jesus knew what it was like to be alone without people who understood him. You say, well, yeah, but what about the disciples? Oh, you mean the guys that argued over who was greatest, those guys? They didn't always get what the Lord was teaching and, um, and um, exemplifying in his behavior. Being alone can attack our self-worth. And I know standing here right now today, some of us do feel like odd birds. I remember when my parents moved us from Arizona to California, we moved to Visalia. I had just finished my sophomore year in high school, and my high school had 400 students in it. And we moved to Visalia, and they enrolled me at Mount Whitney with 2,000 students. And I had to, as a junior, go to high school. I did not know one person, didn't know the campus, uh, talk about feeling like the odd bird out, you know, beginning all over again. And you, you, in those moments in life, you can feel like no one understands me or knows what I'm going through. There are times when life can bl deal you a blow that even makes you feel less than. Everyone faces times of loneliness, but the good news is he never leaves us or forsakes us. I have stood on that scripture this past 13 years. I know all about loneliness. I know all about feeling all alone, but my God has never failed me, not one time, and in all the years to come in the future, he'll not fail me then. I'm telling you, he he never leaves you and he never forsakes you. Just lean on him. He's there for us. He'll never abandon us. He knows the way out of our pain or loneliness. And by the way, if any of you today listening online or here in person, and I see you all the way at the street back there, I love you guys. Um, if anyone here or online if you're wanting to get married, I believe with you, God has your perfect mate. And I also believe God will move heaven and earth to cross your paths with that special person. If you'll just give it to him and trust him. Because we were created for relationships. We were never created to do life alone. We can be confident in his goodness. He is there for us day in, day out. Maybe you think today no one even knows I exist or even cares. God knows and God cares. He knows you, he cares about you, even when you mess up. You know, sometimes we're doing really good. We feel like we're soaring like an eagle. And then all of a sudden, whoops, we have a big failure in our lives. Or we're doing really good in relationships, and then all of a sudden, we're devastated by somebody's words or what they did. And our self-worth goes out the window. Now we're dealing with fear again and not sure that we fit in anywhere. You are not, I am not, the fifth sparrow. We're not the odd bird out. God is there taking care of us. And we're not without value or worth. Even if we are alone, we still are with him. He is there with us and he cares. We are somebody to him. Self-exaltation leads to pride. Self-deprecation, tearing down oneself, that leads to paralysis where you just don't do anything. And neither one pleases God. The devil wants us to think, first of all, that we are worth anything. 
we're one big failure, we're one big mistake, we're less than other people. Or he wants us to think we're better than everybody else. We know more, we have more, and our way, bless God, is always the right way, and everybody else is wrong. I challenge all of us today, don't fall for the enemy's trap. Don't think of yourself more highly than you ought to think. That's recorded for us in Romans 12, 3. Don't think you're better than, and let's not believe that we're less than others. That, let's believe what the Lord says. Psalm 118, the Lord is on my side. I'll not fear. What can man do to me? What can people do to me? I still have God. Jesus displayed our great value to him on the cross. And so no matter how many times we fail or make a mistake, he still loves us, he sees worth in us, and he has purpose for us, every single one of us. You know, at my house, if you went in the kitchen right now, I have a fridge like probably all of you do as well. And on my fridge, I have artwork from some of my grandkids, but I also have pictures, pictures of my family, pictures of friends. And you know, just at the odd time, when I go by the fridge and I look at one of those pictures up there, they make me smile. I, I, they just make me happy, they bring joy looking at the people that I love that are in my life. Well, I just want to close by saying this. My picture is on God's fridge, and your picture is on God's fridge. And when he looks at you, it makes him smile. It brings him joy. You are a child of God, and you are the beloved. Amen? Let's pray. Heavenly Father, thank you that none of us are a fifth sparrow. None of us are worthless. None of us have to live alone or do life by ourselves. None of us are rejected by you, God. We're not the odd bird out. We are the chosen ones. We are your children. And today we just step in on purpose into that love and acceptance right now. And we thank you for it. Thank you, Lord. Even as you care about a little sparrow, how much more do you care for us? We love you. We love you. In Jesus' name, amen.